Yes, hello everyone. This is Tommy. Thank you for always watching the videos. Now this time I want to give some advice for therapists and trainers. I'd like to introduce a single point piece of advice that can be used in treatment. Today's theme is something to try when the shoulder blade is not peeling off well. Do you approach the shoulder blade area during your treatment? If you're always taking an approach towards the shoulder blades and you're having trouble peeling off the shoulder blades, please make sure to watch today's video until the end. Now let's get started. Firstly, I want to understand the principles and structures of movement. The shoulder blade is basically a plate-shaped bone. It's positioned over the rib cage, hanging at the tip of the collarbone. The only part that directly connects to the trunk is the tip of the shoulder, called the shoulder difference joint. This plate is hanging from a single joint. This structure exists above the wall of the rib cage. Basically, this plate of the scapula and the wall of the rib cage are not directly connected, so there's a gap underneath the scapula, a so-called space. The scapula is structured to slide over the ribs. Movement upwards is upward rotation. Movement downwards is downward rotation. Movement towards the spine is called adduction. Movement away from the spine is called abduction. And when it rotates upwards, it's an upward rotation. And when it rotates downwards, it's a downward rotation. All movement of the scapula is done by sliding on the rib surface. Simply put, this smooth sliding motion is somewhat easier to move when it is floating than when it is in close contact with the wall. When the structure is fully attached, it inevitably bumps into each other. When moving the shoulder blades, it grinds. This is exactly because the structure is too close and bumps into each other. If the scapula is slightly floated and pulled by muscles while floating, the movement of the scapula becomes smoother. The approach to creating this slightly floating structure is called peeling or flipping. This is the approach. The main purpose of this peeling or flipping is to make the shoulder blades float slightly off the rib surface. First, please keep this point in mind. What should we think about to lift the shoulder blades? Today, I would like to introduce this by dividing it into three points. The first point is the position of the scapula. This is building posture. You can see that this scapula's position is slightly closer to the adduction direction and spine direction, the left shoulder blade. This is the left arm protruding from the left scapula. If this left arm is on the body side or flowing towards the back, the shoulder blade sinks downward due to the weight of the arm. The shoulder blade sinks downward or moves toward the adduction direction. Either way, the angle of the scapula is going to adhere to the rib surface, so it will be difficult to peel or overturn. This translates to the weight of the arm resting on the shoulder blade. Even if you try a peeling approach around the shoulder blade in this position, you won't be able to peel it off well. It becomes heavier with the weight of the arm and it doesn't move, or the angle is flat and it's hard to hold. To improve this, you need to remove the weight of your arm. Removing the weight of the arm is to lift this elbow high. It looks like this. If the elbow is low, the shoulder blade will tilt inward due to the weight of the arm. If you don't like this movement, stretch your elbow to about 90 degrees. In this state, keep the forearm pressed. With the elbow bent at 90 degrees, there's some space between the trunk and the elbow. This is the ideal posture. When you can do this, the weight of the arm does not rest on the shoulder blades, so you can move more freely. It also allows movement towards adduction, which makes it easier to hold the medial edge of the scapula. The first checkpoint is simply not to put the weight of your arm on the scapula. For this, it is necessary to keep your elbows in a high position. If you hold your elbows in a high position, the scapula becomes lighter. They become easier to move in the direction of abduction, so it becomes easier to hold and peel off. Please press down this area first. We can assume that even if you can form this posture, there will still be cases where the scapula does not move. Let's introduce the second checkpoint. As I mentioned at the beginning, 
Peeling off the scapula is like lifting the scapula from the surface of the ribs. What is needed to lift the scapula? Please take a moment to think about it. To make the scapula float from the rib surface, it's useless to push from behind. If you continue to approach from the back, the scapula will inevitably be pressed to the side of the rib surface. You can't make it float. So to make it float, it is important to press in from the front. The scapula floats backwards when pushed from the front. With the so-called rib part fixed, the scapula itself floats by pushing appropriately from the front side. So an important point is how to cleanly push the shoulder blade from the front side. The first thing I want to consider on top of that is a slight strain on the chest muscles. The shoulder blade basically has a protrusion on the front side. This front extension is called the right shoulder process. The right shoulder process is attached to the pectoralis minor. The chest muscle, the pectoralis minor, connects to the right shoulder process. If the pectoralis minor muscle becomes stiff, it causes the right shoulder process to pull forward. Pulling the right shoulder process forward essentially pushes the shoulder blade onto the rib surface. Peeling the shoulder blade off cleanly can be quite difficult. Therefore, if the shoulder blade doesn't peel off well, or if the inner inflammation doesn't settle well. Firstly, you must consider an approach to the front muscles. The main one is the pectoralis minor muscle or the approach to the pectoralis major muscle which connects to the humerus can also be considered the same if the pectoralis major muscle becomes stiff and pulls the humerus forward because it pulls the shoulder blade forward over the humerus the shoulder blade is then pressed against the rib surface making it hard to float first it's important to properly loosen the pectoralis minor and major, the muscles around the chest. If you handle this front approach properly, there will no pull from the front. It will become easier for the shoulder blade to move back, which means it will become easier for it to peel off from the rib surface if you're careful with your posture, but your shoulder blades still don't peel off well. First of all, consider approaching your chest next. Let's introduce the third point. Once you've loosened the muscles around your chest, now consider the muscles around your armpits. There's a large muscle called the anterior muscle in the flank part of the scapula. The anterior muscle starts from the side of the rib, goes through the flank part and attaches to the inside of the back of the shoulder blade. If this anterior muscle that connects the inside of the shoulder blade and rib bone hardens, the shoulder blades cannot be lifted as they would be pulled outwards. In other words, if the chest muscles, small and large pectorals, armpit muscles and the anterior muscle harden, the shoulder blades will definitely be pulled outward, which means they will form in a way that they stick to the surface of the ribs and it is hard to imagine that they will float. In order to float, you have to relax the muscles on the front side. Therefore, it is necessary to loosen the muscles of the armpits along with the muscles of the chest. How do we approach this forward flexion? Hold this outer edge firmly and go down in the adduction direction. When you do that, your armpit muscles will stretch. The peeling approach to the scapula is not just about bringing it from the inside. The approach of starting from the outside and bringing it inward is also effective. This specific approach is also included in the overview section. If you are interested in the details, please take a look. Today, we're going to talk about the approach point anyway. The important thing is to relax the muscles on the front side. The anterior muscles are the pectoralis minor, the pectoralis major, and the pectoralis major pectoralis muscles. Please check the pectoral muscles in the flank area. When you are free from this small split in the muscle on the front side, the scapula protrudes posteriorly from the shoulder blade. When we say that it protrudes freely backward, it means that the scapula floats above the rib surface. The medial edge of the scapula is easier to hold. I think you will be able to turn your shoulder blades freely, no matter what. The peeling of the shoulder blades is bad. Just approach around the medial edge and around the shoulders. There are people who are trapped. I approached the inner muscles. If the outer muscles are stiff, 
The shoulder blades are stiff, it's going to be pulled more and more. The scapula is more pressed against the rib surface. It will be difficult to peel off. What you need to think about is how to create a posture. And this means that the anterior muscles are properly relaxed. With that in mind, if you can approach the area around the shoulder blades, I'm sure we'll see results that are different from what we've seen so far. Please refer to it for more in-depth hands-on videos. I'll also put it in the summary column. If you are interested, please check it out as well. That's it for today's video. Looking forward to the next one. Thank you very much.